the selection of the constituency it was purely decided by high command of both the parties but yes, why the bjp the bjp high command has spoken to my brother in law kumar swami it's going to be a prestige battle for dk shiv kumar to get his brother elected the party strength is good both the parties uh, this thing and uh, narendra modi's charisma is there the congress is fighting very hard in karnataka simply because it's one of the few uh, states that it is in power they have taken seriously there is no issue about it but uh, our cadres are also equally uh, serious are you going to mold yourself into the party mold although i am into politics i will not do a conventional politics mm. the chief minister said you are a white collared politician i am so much connected with the poor people and middle class that white collar definition doesn't uh, suit some people for political reason yes they may not be uh, liking but by heart they are liking me so oh, by heart they by, like uh, by, yeah <laughs> you chose that very carefully yeah yeah by heart uh, they are liking me bjp manifesto says that above 70 ayushman bharat will be extended budgetary allocation for ayushman bharat at this point of time is about 27000 crores so that need to be increased putting a child through medical college has become absolutely back breaking for middle class families the number of government colleges have increased the number of government seats have increased sudden heart attacks which are happening post covid 30% of heart attack that occurs in india is below 45 years of age young and middle aged indians are becoming vulnerable to this heart attack air pollution is emerging as a new risk factor you're going to delhi if you win yeah that's going to be something yeah. that i think last year nearly 20 lakhs people in india have died to, uh, have died due to air pollution those who have got good friends they live longer there is very scientific uh, data Namaste Jai Hind you're watching or listening to another edition of the ANI podcast with Smita Prakash This episode is being filmed in Bengaluru Karnataka The state goes to polls in the second and third phase which is in April and May this year The results will be out in June My guest today is Dr C N Manjunath he's fighting the election on a BJP ticket though he's the son-in-law of the former prime minister of India Mr Deve Gowda who is the patriarch of the JDS Dr C N Manjunath is fighting from Bangalore rural against D K Suresh of the Congress now what makes this contest interesting is that D K Suresh is the brother of the current deputy chief minister of Karnataka D K Shiv Kumar and Dr Manjunath's brother in law is the former chief minister of Karnataka H D Kumaraswamy and as i said before Dr Manjunath's father in law is the former prime minister of India Deve Gowda That isn't the only thing that's interesting. Both the contestants, DK Suresh of the Congress and Dr. Manjunath belong to the powerful Vokaliga community. Thank you very much Dr. Manjunath for uh, being part of the podcast. Uh, I'm looking forward to this conversation. Okay. Uh, especially so because uh, uh, you're so, such an accomplished doctor, uh, a physician and now you are uh, in making an entry into electoral politics. So I want to know about your story. Um why did you decide to get into electoral politics? No, I'm I'm a cardiologist. I worked as a cardiologist for 35 years at uh, Asia's largest uh, cardiac institute called Sri Jayadev Institute of Cardiovascular Sciences and Research at Bangalore. And uh, I held the position of director of this institute for 18 years. So during this period the government institution mind you mm. so it has recorded 500% growth and the institute uh, bed strength was increased from 300 to 2000 beds exclusively for cardiac care mm. that makes it uh, one of the largest heart care destination in southeast asia so i coined three slogans for myself i truly literally practiced uh, these three slogans that is treatment first payment next life is more important than the file and humanity's priority and uh, this affordable cardiac healthcare model was not just restricted to bangalore uh, I, we realized better to take this affordable cardiac healthcare under uh, public uh, part, i mean platform to the other parts of karnataka so we established uh, and commissioned 400 bedded hospital jayadeva institute of cardiac uh, hospital at mysore then another 370 bedded uh, cardiac hospital at gulbarga kalburgi 
which is uh, 650 kilometers from here. Mm. In between, we also s uh, set up some satellite centers in other parts of Bangalore. So, what happened? I I was uh, I retired from the services of Jaydev Institute on January 31st. So, post retirement, there were which year? This year. This year. Okay. So, January 31st, I retired from the institute mm. service. Mm. Uh, on this year only. So, post retirement, what happened? There were a lot of felicitations across the state. Mm. Bangalore, and then in different parts of Bangalore, Mysore, Kalburgi, and uh, there were a lot of uh, invitations for fe felicitation from other parts of Karnataka. So, in these felicitation meetings, a uh, lot of people started suggesting you have completed your innings. Even uh, your tenure, extended tenure also you have completed and you have brought some reforms in a uh, public art institute and also you have, you have turned, ar turned around the, the, I mean, face of that hospital and you have got uh, such a great administrative skill apart from being a cardi I mean, accomplished cardiologist. So, your services should not be, your contributions and your uh, ideas should not be restricted to only state of Karnataka and it is better uh, if you do something uh, similarly at national level. Mm. So, at the same time, these elections were notified for Lok Sabha. So, then, uh, because, so there were a lot of uh, media stories that it is better if Dr. Manjanath contest for Lok Sabha election. So, then the political parties have picked up my name. So, my entry into politics is accidental. I never dreamt of uh, entering politics any time because I have dedicated myself to my profession and to this cardiology institute. Uh, Dr. Manjanath, you're a self-made man and uh, you've uh, got expertise in a field where you didn't have godfathers. You did it completely on your own. But now you're entering a field and that too, uh, you know, a field where there's so much of uh, competition and the space is very limited. Um, also, your uh, success will not depend solely on your talent. There are many factors. Correct. Correct. correct? correct. So, uh, and also you'll always be known as uh, Mr. Deve Gowda's son-in-law. Mr. Kumar Swami's brother-in-law. Um, at this stage in life, uh, when you have already got so many achievements, is it not going to sit awkwardly that you will be known by a relative's accomplishments rather than your own? No, as far as my professional achievement is concerned, it's purely my own talent, my own dedication, my own commitment. Although I was, uh, I mean, although I am coming from a political uh, family, uh, I stayed away from politics during all this uh, last 35, 40 years. So, I, uh, because I did not uh, get any attachment to politics. Now, of course, now I am contesting from Lok Sabha election. That means I am in politics. Uh, but uh, here what is happening, uh, the selection of the sim, I mean party and uh, the selection of the constituency it was purely decided by high command of both the parties. So, I had no role to play in that. And uh, so, that is how it has... But why uh, the BJP? No, what has happened, that is the... Uh, that is what they have decided. Because first of all, I was not keen on contesting. And uh, so, they... Both the parties, because uh, the BJP high command has spoken to my brother-in-law Kumar Swami. Then Kumar Swami came and discussed with me and also there was a lot of uh, other BJP MLAs from this uh, constituency. They came and had a discussion with me. It is better if you con contest uh, from uh, BJP. Your contestant uh, is a very sharp politician. He right. also comes from a political family. His brother is the deputy chief minister and they both fight uh, elections in a very tough uh, manner. They don't take any prisoners. Uh, sure. Whereas you are a gentleman uh, candidate, how are you going to fight the rough and tumble? Yeah, certainly it is a, a tough battle and uh, it is a political battle. So, I am, see what has happened, if you look at the mathematics of 2019 election, mm. so the sitting member of the parliament from Congress has won that seat. Mm. So, in 2019, uh, it was JDS supporting Congress. 
and uh, the bjp was contesting on its uh, i mean solo mm. so uh, although bjp was contesting alone they have secured quite a good number of uh, quite a uh, healthy uh, votes 6.7 lakhs the bjp candidate in 2019 when contested alone mm. they have secured 6.7 lakh votes and now jds is with bjp so mathematically we are ahead so it's not the candidate what you're saying it's the alliances which get the yeah, votes because bjp and jds jds have a strong base in this uh, bangalore rural constituency in some three pockets bjp is strong in another five pockets uh, the jds is strong mm. so both jds and bjp workers are working with lot of harmony and uh, there is lot of enthusiasm Uh, among the both the but DK workers. Suresh is uh, it's going to be a prestige battle for DK Shiv That's Kumar yeah. to get his brother elected. His brother elected uh, got elected last year when there was such a Modi wave. He was the only one who got elected. So it's not as if and then the Congress is in power in the state. So a very uphill task, would you say? As because uh, any election is always challenging. That is the reason it is called election. the very definition of election means there is a contest and there are some challenges and uh, see what happens uh, particularly uh, i have toured all these eight assembly segments in the last uh, 18 19 days there is a very good response a lot of people are welcoming me and they are telling it's good you have decided to contest we are very happy to uh, vote for you and you go to any new con corner of this state and not only from this uh, bangalore rural constituency at least in every village there are at least 10 to 15 uh, cardiac patients which have been treated by us mm. so they have that gratitude factor is also has given some momentum of mm. course that alone is not going to be a game changer that alone is not going to uh, take me to the uh, victory post uh, but certainly uh, the party strength is good both the parties uh, this thing and uh, narendra modi's charisma is there see another interesting thing uh, there is a, a difference between your assembly election and lok sabha election mm. the parties which have won assembly election they have lost in lok sabha election that is the scenario that's how the c- common man looks from uh, that angle mm. the perspective for lok sabha election is different from the assembly elections but uh, the congress is fighting uh, it, it's fighting very hard in karnataka uh, simply because it's one of the few uh, states that it is in power so uh, it's like i said you you know when you fight an election you have to get into your competitor's mind space to understand what is clicking for him and for him what is clicking is that he has the support of his brother and his brother is seen as uh, somebody who can not just deliver in this state it can he can deliver in other states also the congress high command sends him even till himachal pradesh correct correct to save governments and things you think he won't do that for his brother no certainly in fact uh, is campaigning himself first time i was told is uh, visiting apartments is visiting voters so they have taken seriously there is no issue about it but uh, our cadres are also equally uh, serious and they have taken up this uh, seat uh, as a prestigious uh, constituency uh, the chief minister said you are a white collared politician mm-hmm. do you agree with that no no i think because all through my career huh. why i am liked by you know i am liked universally by all party people now of course because i have i'm contesting from uh, bjp as the bjp said in salens some people for political reason yes they may not be uh, liking but by heart they are liking me oh by heart they by like yeah, <laughs> by, yeah you chose that very carefully yeah, yeah by heart uh, they are liking me and uh, see uh, we have taken this uh, i mean election seriously mm. certainly uh, they are doing their job mm. uh, but uh, even the uh, former prime minister devagoda influence is very much there in this constituency mm. then former chief ministers edurappa and kumar swami they have done a lot during their period so all these are going to be contributing factors uh, for my victory see during my tenure of 18 years i have 
told and I have truly, literally practiced, my VIPs to the hospital are not politicians, not ministers, MLAs, MPs. My VIPs to the hospital are f farmers, poor people and uh, laborers and uh, those who are uh, not affordable. Mm. So I have, that is the reason. So in fact, uh, uh, I was very much attached to these poor people and the lower middle class and the middle class for them because government grants alone was not sufficient to run this uh, facility to, to so generously. I have roped in about 45 to 50 charitable uh, organization and also I have roped in about 50 to 60 philanthropists and donors and I have built up a poor patient corpus fund of nearly 150 crores. The interest generated was given to this thing. So I have practiced in such a way no patient has gone untreated for the want of money. Whether they have money, no money. Whether they have documents, no document. Whether they have insurance, no insurance. Everybody was treated. Because heart, when gets into an attack, heart attack cannot wait for all those documents. Correct. Cannot wait for all those formalities. The file later, you yeah. said. Yeah, yeah. So, most imp so, I believe in only one, as far as I am concerned, there is only one community. That is humanity. So, in that. So, because I am so much connected with the poor people and middle class, that white color definition doesn't uh, suit. Mm. So, because uh, for me, white color means kindness. Mm. For me, white color means generosity. So, kindness makes the person most beautiful, however one may look. Okay. You spoke about, uh, you know, making affordable uh, cardiac care is something that you have pursued all your life. Now, you are doing it as an individual and there are several uh, healthcare uh, professionals I know of who on an individual capacity are doing it. Some institutions are doing it. But, uh, you know, with the kind of population we have, it's a huge challenge. Even a country like America cannot provide affordable health care to a large section of their population. Every country tries its best. But, you know, like the wait times to, uh, you know, get uh, even a dialysis is not easy. But in our country, we have managed to some extent. But why is affordable health care so inaccessible to large section of our population? See, 65% of deaths in India is due to lifestyle diseases. Hmm. And 30% of the health care is provided by the public sector. That is by the government. 70% of the health care is still... Uh, in the cracks. They fall between the cracks. No, is given by private uh, agents. But that's not hospital. enough. Yeah. That's not enough. So, the need of the hour is to make this uh, health care affordable mm. to the cross-section of the society. So, this is where we have to bring a lot of uh, changes. Of course, we have Aishman Bharat scheme. Yeah, so that is providing uh, health care mm. to those below poverty line, right? Mm. But Aishman Bharat need to be strengthened. There are many procedures which have been left out uh, in the Aishman Bharat scheme and the package rates are not yet revised. So as a result, in fact, at least package rate has to be revised so that uh, many private hospitals will take this uh, yeah. scheme. See what is happening because uh, the package rates are not revised. Probably is likely to be revised. Certainly, it is going to be revised. Uh, when no, if the private hospital do not take this uh, scheme forward, because now they are hesitant, it is true because uh, the package rates are not meeting the actual cost. Mm. So now the entire load is falling on the government hospitals. Yeah. So when too much of load is falling on the government hospital, yes. uh, somewhere down the line, there will be a burnout syndrome as set in in many government hospitals and the quality also suffers to some extent. So okay. to make this uh, affordable health care yeah. uh, accessible, so we have to strengthen the existing hospital with more manpower with uh, and also some administrative uh, reforms has to be brought in like uh, for example delegation of power decentralization so that's how we should because we have many medical colleges today in india we are now close to 780 medical colleges so maybe about uh, six years back there were only three, 380 now it is 780 mm. so now we have to strengthen those medical colleges uh, so that everybody gets a good health care. A couple of questions that come to mind. Uh, BJP manifesto uh, says that above 70 Ayushman Bharat will be extended. Uh, 
so that has come as a huge uh, relief relief to many people because there are many who you know want uh, their companies to extend medical care not just for the family but for their parents also it's something that everybody is telling their companies please include because basically you're uh, one stroke or one heart attack away from total wipe out of your savings once you get into Correct. a hospital a middle class family is wiped out with just one uh, issue whether it is a brain related or heart related issue you're wiped out or even kidney for that or matter kidney for cancer that. yeah so your cancer is of course a complete wipe out middle class uh, care for cancer now uh, this uh, the manifesto also says talks about uh, cancer care also that you know uh, they will be screening they're going to help with women uh, in screening for that so uh, for cervical cancer so i just wanted to know uh, from you that uh, these are steps which the bjp promises that it will take but can it be delivered for example you have more 70% uh, if you are saying uh, sorry 70 and above if it is included in ayushman administratively can it be delivered yeah no what is happening the budgetary allocation for ashman bharat at this point of time is about 27000 crores so that need to be increased yeah so it is possible see indian budget size indian government the budget size is somewhere around 45 lakh crores so giving another maybe few crores few thousands of crores is not a big thing mm. so certainly including senior citizens under ashman bharat is a really progressive step it is a healthy step so and most important is uh, the medical colleges uh, because they have to get a teaching i mean they have to get clinical material for yeah. teaching the medical students so people should also look at because the mindset of our people is only they have to go to corporate hospital five star hospitals and all so they don't realize uh, that even the medical colleges are providing all this care at an affordable cost i don't know uh, but doctor. it's not uniformly yes uh, i mean the quality, the quality. is yeah. yeah see i understand this yeah. is where probably we have to uh, bring all the stakeholders particularly see, you take suppose i take my parent to a hospital and then they say this tent cost this much this tent cost this much what is the first thing that we are going to say okay put the best one that uh, is where all kind of malpractices come in doctor yeah that's correct see Uh, there is commercialization in all walks of life in Correct. India today. Yes. So, for example, cost of the stand, which was somewhere around one lakh or seventy thousand way back down. in, yeah. yes, come down to thirty thousand. They have yeah. capped the the same uh, BJP yeah. government when Mr. Anand Kumar was uh, the Minister for Chemicals and Fertilizers. It's a broad down, but the package rates I agree. Yeah. As remains, so there is a need to. to some extent regulate the cost of these procedures overall cost of the procedure i mean scientific method should be adopted i understand that you know it there are market forces at play so uh, one shouldn't uh, expect that everything should be the same if you have different kinds of ketchups you can have different kinds of stents also i guess now but cost of the stent is remains same whether but it is the but the, everything else that comes the package deal. yeah the package i mean continues to remain yeah. same So uh, the other question uh, which came to mind after you spoke was about the medical colleges um the capitation fees the uh, that one has to pay medical college is literally putting a child through medical college has become absolutely back breaking for middle class families it's out of reach firstly F- first it begins with the coaching classes it you know as soon as a child shows any aptitude it becomes It, the parent is happy but the parent is also how am i going to provide for this right and this has been the case when i was in school and this is continues to be the case even now and in a country which is providing and which is bringing out doctors which the entire world looks for indian doctors to come and practice in their country and we are seen as people who do that how can we improve the system of our colleges yeah see now what has happened the number of government colleges have increased mm. the number of government seats have increased so number of government seats in private colleges also has increased now there is a more opportunity for our uh, talented people to get into medicine even number of post graduate seats for example maybe 5 years back number of post graduate seats were somewhere around 30000 now it's about 90000 mm. and number of mbbs seats which was around uh, 60000 now it's 120000 today 
ஐ திங்க் நவ் இட் இஸ் ஓப்பன்ட் அப் so okay. yeah now particularly in the last 3 years there has been almost 100% increase or more than 100% increase in the number of post graduate seats and always uh, and also the mbbs seats. is there fairness in uh, in giving permission for uh, medical colleges to open in some states and not in the others is there is it a fair system is it fair play well now what is happening uh, there are more earlier maybe Uh, up to 2017 18 there were more medical colleges in southern Sub- india yeah. now i think now it is sh- shifted to north and northeast mm-hmm. i think there i agree there was small distribution of medical colleges now it is getting properly distributed are you in favor of neat or against it so now what is happening if you look at this uh, neat the ranking i mean whatever the uh, ranking limit they have made, this thing people with uh, 5% marks also they have got seats now because number of seats have increased mm. yeah uh doc i want to ask you is that if you once you are if you are elected and you get into the parliament what would you like to do uh, as a parliamentarian what is it that you want to contribute to society see number 1 we have to strengthen our healthcare system you have to strengthen uh, the existing healthcare system with more manpower and also for for example we have aims uh, so because now one of the biggest challenges in a government sector is uh, i mean a uh, lot of posts are vacant mm-hmm. so we need to fill up this post mm-hmm. number one and also there has to be de- central delegation of power mm-hmm. because in my opinion the buildings and equipments alone will not deliver the good treatment so workplace wellness has to be there you have to create a, a great working atmosphere this can come through and most important uh, our focus should move from construction to creation of post they spend lot of money on construction but when it comes to creation of post they back out so that uh, balance has to be corrected since i have a cardiologist in the room i have to ask you about these uh, sudden heart attacks which are happening post covid uh, young people um, you know passing away in the gym while at work uh, in their 20s in their 30s is it related to covid is it related to lifestyle problems what is the reason this is happening 35% of deaths in india is due to heart attack heart attack related disease and another very painful thing is 30% of heart attack that occurs in India is below 45 years of age. Young and middle-aged Indians are becoming vulnerable to this heart attack and its related disease. Definitely it's a lifestyle diseases and uh, if you look at last 15 years there is nearly 22% increase in the prevalence of heart attack among the youngsters. We have a we have our own study what is called premature heart attack or heart attack in the young study so in the last 7 uh, years we have studied close to 6000 young heart attack patients 51% were smokers and see if you look at the risk factors from young heart attack group to the old heart attack there were less diabetics less high blood pressure among the youngsters 51% were smokers and 17% had a strong family history so if somebody in the family has suffered an heart attack before the age of 50 such family members are more prone for heart attack mm. interestingly 25% those who suffer heart attack in the younger population do not have any conventional risk factors no smoking yeah. no diabetes and they are fit and fine and no fam- fa- no family history here comes the role of stress stress today is considered to be a new tobacco so they have professional stress they have a stress of i mean they are thinking about future and see the uh, i mean the mentality of our younger generation they are trying to do too many things in a too short time and they don't believe in going step by step step by step mm. so too much of stress so that is one and another thing is uh, we are looking at other risk factors which were not con- conventional risk factors we know that is smoking excessive drinking diabetes high blood physical inactivity mm. and all those things are known factors mm. right and high cholesterol mm. and food habits have changed and mm. food products have changed today even female they were getting some protection against heart disease in the premenopausal age group that is fading away what is happening today 
uh, women are also working like men what you call it as menish women mm. so except for reproductive cycle they are exactly working like and today children education has become mothers examination yes and i think mothers are so much stressed even a kid i mean uh, kindergarten or maybe grade 2 grade 3 and mothers are so tensed when a, a kid goes for examination when kids results are uh, going to be announced mothers is more stressed and how many mothers we have seen uh, at least i can quote some example where uh, they came for, with history of chest pain palpitation headache and i asked uh, we checked everything it's normal then she was telling no no i am very much stressed uh, because uh, my son as appeared for examination he did not get good marks then asked uh, which i was thinking whether it may be grade 10 or grade 12 then she was telling lkg so i think these are stress is playing an havoc and food habits have changed air pollution is emerging as a new risk factor air yes. pollution yes. so i think uh, you're going to delhi if you win yeah that's going to be something yeah. that I think last year nearly 20 lakhs people in India have died to, uh, have died due to air pollution. See common man perception is air pollution causes only lung problems. Yeah. Bronchitis or some sort of uh, I mean some chronic obstructive lung disease something like that. Air pollution is also an important enhancing risk factor for heart attack nowadays. Mm. So these are some of the things and fatty liver, polycystic ovaries, uh, hormonal imbalances. and uh, even some rheumatoid arthritis i think these are all but still 15 Stress. to 20% do not have they are fit and fine then this thing regarding covid see the prevalence of heart attack among the youngsters was pretty i mean increasing even pre covid also okay so post covid uh, during that acute phase of covid uh, maybe there was some 5% 6% increase in the prevalence of heart attack but that effect last only for one year uh, two years and also there was uh, a debate whether vaccine as hmm. whether vaccine has increased the incidence of heart attack according to study for every uh, 10 lakhs vaccines the uh, the heart attack has happened in only 4 4 out of every 10 lakhs that is very insignificant minimal number. yes i think uh, this is how it has happened but definitely uh, the food habits food practices and the lifestyle and the stress they are contributing uh, factors you know uh, a lot of our food habits Uh, in most families are traditional food habits i can understand where uh, you know the new ones where you're eating burgers and pizzas and things like that and then not getting your exercise so h- high carbohydrate content processed food which you had said but there are others who you know that they turn around and say oh uh, for generations we have been eating this so what so uh, it nothing happened to us why are you getting a heart attack you know so those things are also there but the point is the earlier generations didn't have that stress didn't have the pollution didn't have all that this generation has that the point is that nobody goes for screening for testing when you see the signs and symptoms because everybody is scared of going to the hospital what will everybody say you go to the hospital oh simply doctor will tell you to do so many tests 10000 rupees gone in tests so they don't do that so unless they've in a state of heart attack nobody will go to go and check see since burden of uh, cardiovascular disease is so high in india men above 35 women above 45 should have a medical checkup anniversary we celebrate anniversaries yeah. no? wedding anniversary and all i think uh, this is where i think men above 35 women above 45 should undergo medical checkup anniversary so who should do that it should it be a company wherever you work make it mandatory for them yeah. because unless you do that nobody is going to do it see for example for uh, indian civil service servants ias ips yeah. and all those so there is a rule uh, that after the age of 40 they should have a compulsory health checkup even in the army navy air force yeah, it's even there. in karnataka we have introduced this for all this care this uh, transport public transport employees so they are undergoing mm. i think it is mandatory that all government employees or whether it is uh, or even private employees they should undergo a checkup after the age of th- 35 40 that should be made compulsory otherwise you can say we will hold back their promotion we can hold back their uh, in, i mean uh, what do you call 
incentives or whatever it is or mm. perks because uh, even like pilots have to undergo it everybody who are in these critical care jobs they have to undergo it but uh, if it is made mandatory but how how will you get women to do it who don't attend offices who are uh, homemakers how will they Hello, you have to create an awareness see, see prevention is better than cure precaution is still the best so you have to create an awareness about uh, the importance of food habits importance of exercise importance of stress management from the school levels itself maybe uh, from grade 6 or grade 7 from the uh, that concept should come from that the other thing i wanted to ask you is about uh, holistic health alternative uh, uh, therapies now uh, can that all help as far as dealing with uh, you know critical issues like health issues are concerned or is it just a lifestyle change with that yeah lifestyle see there are uh, non medicine medicines hmm. for example walking in sunlight then exercise non i am talking about non medicine i am just enumerating the list of non medicine medicine okay. one is walking in sunlight then regular exercise then uh, diet proper diet and also intermittent fasting then rest fruits and vegetables and uh, dining with family members mm. and having good friends even friendship uh, has got lot of stress impact busters. Yeah, stress busters and as you age those who have got good friends they live longer there is very scientific uh, data mm. then meditation then yoga then gratitude so these are all, and these are things which are not in they not in But, capsule form yeah not in capsule form not in injection form and they are all free and no side effects so and also and many i think the the trend of modern day trend is they have everything but they are not happy mm. they are not happy because not that they don't have many things they are uh, unhappy because they feel others are more happy <laughs> happier right uh, where will you get the time let me come back to politics now since uh, we began with politics uh, so towards the end i'll ask you where do you get the time to do all this and especially now that you're entering into such a cutthroat kind of a line will you get time to have the downtime with your family uh, with your uh, friends see when i was uh, working in that institute as a director hardly i used to spend time with the family but at least i uh, used to walk at least 10000 steps a day and 5000 steps i used to walk in the hospital that's why i it negates the uh, statement of white collar because i used to walk 5000 steps in the hospital and uh, in i of course i used to sit in my chamber but uh, more often i used to walk in the corridors of the hospital going to the outpatient OPD. department mm. going to the wards and even i was doing i, I in fact i used to see a uh, lot of patients as a director a mm. lot of people used to ask me manjunath you are a director and why are you seeing so many patients but uh, because my passion is for profession but uh, i used to balance between my professional work and the administrative work uh, beautifully that's one mm. so now after uh, getting into politics uh, of course uh, because I, we are deeply into this campaigning process Uh, now we are walking only around 5000 steps 5000 around 5000 steps and uh, yes uh, diet wherever we go we have to eat something but we see to that we eat more fruits more vegetables hydration is very important it's pretty hot summer hot and yeah. humid atmosphere yeah. so uh, and i was thinking post retirement at least i'm now finding some time to let me spend a little more time with the family apart from doing some uh, limited hours of professional work but uh, same time this thing came <laughs> uh, doc in the kind of profession you uh, you are in uh, religion and caste doesn't play a role when you want to hire a cardiologist when you want to hire a nursing staff paramedical staff their caste and their religion will not matter but you are entering a field where caste and religion matters a lot unfortunately it still plays a very uh, strong role no it depends on your mindset actually whichever party whichever we are there if you, so if your basic mindset is uh, like because we love everybody we respect everybody uh, it all depends on individual uh, i mean the way you look at the things are you going to mold yourself uh, into the party mold or is the party going to take you and mold as 
theirs you know, how does that work uh, the reason i'm asking you is because when a professional gets a non uh, professional uh, non what should i say a politician gets into party politics it's hard to make that shift uh, it's not very easy to be malleable and to become a professional politician how will you do yeah, it yeah let me balance both let me have an equilibrium between the both and certainly uh, we have to balance although i am into politics i will not do a conventional politics mm. so i think i have to balance both i i think in every uh, political system there are some people with some special qualities so not necessarily and uh, i i don't want to criticize anybody for mm. for just a reason I, I, because it's my culture and people say manjunath you are very soft spoken your attitude is very soft whether you really fit into yeah even my cameraman was saying that the mic has to be brought closer to you yeah. because you're very <laughs> soft spoken yeah. but uh, just being soft is uh, not a weakness see throughout my career uh, i am i certainly agree i am very soft spoken but uh, i am soft in approach but firm in decisions so i am soft in approach but firm in decision and that's the reason i could able to bring some reforms um, i mean mm. indian institute of management london school of economics uh, they have said dr manjunath model as an administrator in a public heart institute uh, is uh, worth emulating by other uh, institutions in the country would you encourage finally my last question to you is would you encourage more professionals to get into public service uh, do you think that uh, our a political system can benefit like in singapore say you know where you have uh, where the political parties invite people from all walks of life to come and become part of public service yeah i think it depends on political will also mm -hmm. it all depends on the political leadership see for example uh, honorable prime minister narendra modi see he is encouraging people uh, who are good in their profession who have got some expertise in their uh, field he is picking up some people for example external affairs or even in railways or even in finance so it all depends on political parties uh, political will whether they are going to encourage such sort of people mm. so uh, we have to choose that way so not every political party will encourage uh, professionals right thank you very much uh, <laughs> and you. wishing you all the best and hope you bring the probity which you had in your uh, professional career you bring that into politics we look forward to seeing you in the parliament thank you very much thank you thank you for watching or listening to this edition of the ani podcast with smita prakash do click on the subscribe button namaste jai hind click here to watch the previous episodes